Well, hello again and welcome to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures Podcast. I'm Tom. As always, I'm with my gorgeous, wonderful, <laughs> intelligent, hardworking Disney Cruise Line loving wife and co-host, Michelle. Thank you, sweetie. Hi, everybody. So good to have you with us. We are recording this episode on Sunday, August 22nd, 2021. Man, it seems like August just got here and now we're like a week and a half from it being gone and into September already. I know. I can't believe when you just set the date. That's crazy. It's crazy, crazy. the way these, this summer is is flying by and we're quickly approaching that 50th anniversary celebration yeah. at the Walt Disney World Resort, which we're probably going to be attending, which is very exciting as well. And there's all sorts of great stuff ahead of us. And oh man, it's just, it's... It's a thrilling time a for us and for, I hope, all of you out there. That's right. I yes. hope you're all having some great Disney plans ahead. Too. Yes, we hope so. And thank you for joining us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there... We would really appreciate if you would sign up for our newsletter, please. Please sign up for the newsletter. I guess we're going to have a little bit of an attachment that comes out of this week's <laughs> podcast that is going... Into this week's newsletter that Michelle created. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we'll talk about that a little later, but it's just more importantly, a kind of a way to just be more involved in the Hyperion Adventures podcast world. Yeah. And we don't share your email with anybody. We just use it to send you that uh, weekly newsletter. That's it. That's all we use it for just to kind of get you more involved. Another thing that's going to be starting, I believe this week, possibly next week, is that we've been kind of, I, with all this stuff that's been going on, I've been a little slow at getting our nominations what? in for our <laughs> Hyperion Adventures Disney Hall of Fame for this year. Already? Time? It, it's that time because we have to get the nominations in before we actually get to voting. And like I just said, we're almost all the way through <laughs> August. We have a lot of categories to get through before we actually get to the vote in and around uh, December, late Late November, December. So I got to get that started. So those of you who get the newsletter will get those, get the opportunity to throw in your nominations for each category first, and then it'll go out to all our other locations after that. Wow. Very cool. Yes. Yes. Speaking of those other locations, those great locations <laughs> that you can find us and follow along with us are on social media, like on Twitter, we're at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. We do have a great positive Disney uh, Facebook what? group. <laughs> It's not, that's not actually the name of the Facebook group. It is actually the Hyperion sure? Adventurers <laughs> Facebook group. Uh, we'd love to have you involved there. All you have to do is sign up for it and it's just, you know, be there ready to share some positive Disney energy, which we think that there is very much lacking, especially recently out there on social media. <laughs> what? I know it's been tough recently in recent weeks, but uh, we are trying to keep it positive on the Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. Yeah. And that's a fun group to interact with with and they're marvelous people we hope all of you will consider joining and tell your friends about it and join in and learn some things and just have some fun just have some fun and share your hyperion adventurers what's you what are you doing disney wise or personal wise um that's a great place to share yeah yes uh if you also want to check us out we have some videos and slash episodes on youtube if you want to find us there uh just do a quick search for hyperion adventures podcast hit subscribe and you'll know whenever we have a new video and if you ever want to contact us for any reason please hit us up at our gmail account hyperion adventures podcast at gmail Com. That's right. You can write to us anytime and let us know what you think of the podcast or if you have certain uh, topics that you'd like us to cover or questions. We're there for you. Right. That's what we want to be there. We just want to be to, there to answer your questions, make this podcast whatever you would like it to be. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover, we'd be happy to hear it and, and do that for you. So please contact us through any of these ways, but definitely the email is one of the best ways to do that. Also, please visit either are or either or both of our Spreadshirt shop, Hyperion Adventures uh, podcast Spreadshirt shop, where we have a lots of gear for you to uh, for purchase that you can you know share your love for the show and you know maybe help support us out in the parks. Or if you want to support us in a different way, of course there is also our our Patreon page at uh, patreon.com slash Hyperion Adventures podcast with tiers starting as little as $2 a month just to kind of help us, you know, cut the cost of this show. Right. And we appreciate those of you who have 
already contributed either to our Patreon group or purchased some of the shirts. Yes. That's, or other swag. Other swag. You know, there's coffee mugs, there's water bottles, all sorts of interesting stuff. Hoodies, right. t-shirts, all sorts of stuff at the Spreadshirt Shop. Please go check that out. At least just take a look at it and yeah. see if there's anything that tickles your fancy. They're your newest design. It's really yeah. like top notch. Loving it. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So um, let's start moving on through this week's show. We always start with, of course... My favorite thing from this week. Did <laughs> was, Michelle remember this week? I did week? remember. All right. So we're going to start with her this week. Ooh. Michelle, what is your favorite thing from this week? Uh, my favorite thing actually was the fact that I did take Friday off. So I had a three-day weekend, which was awesome and really, really loved it and needed it. Yes, uh, it was good for you. To, I mean, especially since you had to work last weekend. Yeah. That's how she got the Friday <laughs> office. She had to work last Saturday. So she only had a one day weekend last weekend. Yeah. So uh, getting a nice three day weekend for you and having you around for an extra day was well, really thank nice you. as well. It's so, been fun being with you. Appreciate that. that. Was, you said that though. That was a great thing. And also one of my favorite things from this week for Ooh, sure. Cool. So um, my r- actual favorite thing from this week, I can't actually talk about now. But we will be talking about it somewhere in the near future. Just a tease for that. Be prepared for that at some time. Be prepared. Yes, sometime in the future. <laughs> but And I didn't want to do this, but I kind of got to talk about, since that one I can't talk about. The other, my favorite thing from this week, has to do with Marvel What If again on mm. Disney+. Plus. Um, I talked about it last week, how much I enjoyed the first episode. Right. Well, I may have enjoyed the second episode even more. And for that sure. is because... It was amazing to hear Chadwick Boseman Mm -hmm. take on the voice of T'Challa again within it. I'm a little bit of spoiler for this. I'm not going to give away the story or anything about it, but it was, I was, I was tearing up hearing his voice once again, because I love him as Black Panther, loved hearing his voice. He left us way too soon. And it was just wonderful to hear him playing that part once again. Yeah, it was. I agree with you. I just, the storyline itself, I thought was more intriguing personally. I I know different people have different opinions. Mm -hmm. um, But yeah, well worth checking out. And you're right. It was very uh, emotional layer to it by him in his voice contributing to that episode. It kind of caught me off guard. I guess I, I mean, I saw tweets about it, but I, before that I wasn't really remembering that he had already contributed to this episode before that yeah i knew it was coming um still wasn't prepared for it when i heard his voice um and some of the storylines throughout it it was um it was beautiful and um i hope it's not the last we have we get to hear from him but uh either way even if it is it's a it's a wonderful send out for him so uh such a great great person great actor um and we're big fans yeah absolutely for sure so uh we'd always love to hear what your favorite thing is from any week uh please hit us up uh on our social media or our gmail account or through the newsletter or whatever you want and let us know and we will share that on an upcoming episode of the show great yeah so let's get into this week's stuff we have lots of stuff for you this week including we have an update on a highly anticipated show that will soon be making its debut at the walt disney world resort we'll tell you what show that is and all about Ooh. that uh, we found out a little bit more about the new nighttime fireworks spectacular that is getting set to debut at the most magical place on earth mm-hmm. we'll tell you about that as well and i guess we're gonna have to get to there's a new digital system coming <laughs> to help you better navigate the disney parks and of course it's very controversial <laughs> Who would have guessed? <laughs> but we'll tell you what we think about it uh, when we get to that point but let's not hesitate any longer let's get to our main topic of the week So yes, this week with Disney Cruise Line starting to kind of get back in motion here. The Disney Magic has been sailing for a while out of the UK. The Disney Dream is off sailing with guests aboard once again. We actually have some social media friends out there aboard Mm -hmm. as we're recording this episode right now. Those from Rope Drop Radio and the DCL Duo and among some other friends. Uh, They're actually on board the ship right now and we're hoping you guys are having a wonderful sailing. It sure looks like it uh, from the pictures on social media. Uh, We also heard about the fantasy getting ready to restart Mm -hmm. here pretty soon and we got some news about the Disney Wonder possibly as well. So we figured this was be a perfect time to kind of 
look back at what is going on with Disney Cruise Line right now. And in case you are either planning on having a uh, booking a cruise soon or already have a cruise booked in the very near future, kind of update you with what's going on in and around Disney Cruise Line. Right. In this episode, uh, we wanted to make sure, especially people who have taken Disney cruises in the past, kind of know, you know, what might be a little different about it. But if you also, if you haven't done a Disney cruise, kind of know what to expect. Right. So it's just kind of going to go through some of this information, what you need to know, what's going on out there, what you can look forward to, what's there, what maybe isn't there that you've you've had in the past. And we're kind of going to go through this and hopefully answer all your questions. And at the end of it, if you have any questions that are unanswered by us, please hit us up. We'd be happy to answer them. But we're going to start with Michelle because she's going to tell us kind of what is the state of the cruises right now and get us kicked off before as we go through this wonderful look at Disney Cruise Line. Right, right. I mean, kind of the flow for today is we wanted to, you know, give you the most current updates and things obviously can change quickly. So yes, be prepared that we right. it, it could change tomorrow. So right. just know that, <laughs> you know, and then just, um, you know, kind of going through how to prepare for it and what to expect when you're on the cruise and after the cruise. There as you well. go. Perfect. So, so yeah, yeah, I can't wait. But like you, like you just said, sweetie, you just wanted to kind of say, what, where is the state of uh, Disney cruises and cruises in general? And, you know, for the most part, I think people have, have seen that is the duration of the itineraries being shortened. And, you know, so we saw that with the magic over in the UK, having very short um, staycations, two, three or four days, um, you know, and as you mentioned, also the dream doing the, the alternating three and four day cruises. The fantasy uh, is set to resume now in early September. And they have taken kind of a major turn, I guess you would say, in having the altered schedule of, of a shortened cruise. Now, you may know that the fantasy always does seven day cruises and starting in September for a while, they're going to go to four day cruises. Um, and they're actually going to start selling those four day cruises coming up um, next week, you know, beginning on August 25th. Now, for those people who have already booked on the fantasy uh, for those dates in September and the first week in October, the cruises will still depart on the same planned day. However, instead of a seven day, it's a four day. What? what? I know. I know. So Disney is um, already posted. This is how they're going to handle that for the people who have had reservations for the, a seven day. Um, option one that they could take is getting uh, a full refund. And, you know, they can decide to do that or they can just reschedule for another seven day in the future. But if individuals who have been booked on the seven day are willing to stick with their reservation, uh, but going to a four night, Disney's going to uh, obviously refund the difference in the cost from a, a shortened stay, what would be a four day. And that includes like with their um, port expenses and taxes. Also, if you purchase the vacation protection plan, they'll reimburse you for that. Um, and they're going to also give $400 on board credit per stateroom and a 25% discount for a future sailing. So uh, for those of you who have a booking in, you know, from September 11th to October, I think it's second, um, you can stick with your cruise. It'll be shortened, but you'll get some of these perks to go along with it. Right. I mean, uh, to me, I would totally take advantage of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I would totally take advantage of that because, you know, I mean, yeah, it, it's disappointing. Of course, mm -hmm. if you want a seven day cruise, you'd like a nice, relaxing seven day cruise. But fact is, you're not paying. You're, you're, you're getting money back. On right. top of it, you know, so, you know, this four-day cruise is nice. You're getting the money back. Uh, you're getting the shipboard credit, which you can spend at, you know, Remy or Palo right. or just whatever you want with on, you know, shore excursions, yeah, anything you want. Gifts. Yeah. Yep. Cocktails on board, nice coffees, anything you want while you're on board. Um, and then you're getting the discount on a future cruise, which I think is also spectacular. And then maybe, you know, instead of having those three days or three nights that you would have normally had on the cruise ship, why not pipe up to Walt Disney World right. and get some of that money you save there and, and enjoy a little bit of Disney World or 
whatever, wherever else you want to go. Right. And, you know, it, I, I, I think it's, I would, I would take advantage of it personally, but I, it's what's right for you. Of course, exactly. you know, that's just, this is just what I would sure, do. And sure. I think what you would do as well. Right. Right. Exactly. You know, and, um, keep in mind too, that Disney is running, uh, their summer special through the end of September that gives 25% up to 25% off on some resorts. So yeah, mm -hmm. could be a win-win for some people for could sure. Be, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, obviously, I think it probably goes without saying that Disney has worked closely with the CDC and, and the guidelines uh, as they prepare the fleet for, you know, these safer voyages. Um, interestingly, though, you know, trying to keep this as up to date as possible on Friday, August 20th, the CDC did make an update to their warning um, before they were saying, you know, um, travelers who weren't vaccinated, you know, should avoid cruises. Now they're saying that um, travelers who are at increased risk for severe illness should avoid cruise travel regardless of their vaccination status. Um, they also recommend that people who do decide to go on a cruise get tested one to three days before their trip and three to five days after their trip regardless of vaccination status. So that's very new. Um, I think before what we were seeing, as long as you were vaccinated, they weren't recommending a need for testing. Currently, if you look at everything on the Disney website, and you know we do have something booked for the end of the year, what we've received this week in notifications is still saying if you're vaccinated, you don't have to comply with that testing but we'll see right and these are just suggestions right now from the cdc it's not necessarily a mandate or anything like that so we're going to wait and see how disney handles this but you know we're recording this like i said on uh sunday august 22nd uh right now it is uh 10 a.m here on the west coast by the time we're done recording, things could change. Just be aware of that and keep an eye out for what's going on and how things might shift as we go along. And I am going to go through the, the as we know it right. today, uh, what you'll need to know as far as uh, testing and vaccination and et cetera for when you're preparing to board. Exactly. And, you know, speaking of uh, new announcements, I think this was the week for new announcements when it comes to cruises, is the Bahamas have posted new requirements uh, regarding cruise ships and uh, we don't know what that is going to how that's going to impact cruising I know you told me about that this week yeah so right now uh, what the Bahamas has done is they put out a uh, I don't know a letter saying that they that as of I, I believe it's September 4th but it's early September through uh, early November that no cruise ship will be allowed to stop at any Bahamian port, Bahamian port, uh, that is not, that, that does not have everybody that is age 12 and above vaccinated on board the ship or have a medical reason to not be vaccinated on right. board the ship. So uh, this is definitely going to impact a lot of the cruise lines that uh, hit the Bahamas regularly. Nassau, of course, is mm -hmm. you know a huge uh, stop for many of the cruise lines. Uh, however, this also affects uh, private destinations like Castaway Key. Uh, so we're waiting to hear right. what happens, how Disney is going to respond to that situation. So there is a possibility that if you do have a cruise booked and it's somewhere between that early September uh, to November portal, that either they won't be stopping there because of the fact that you know they can't, they're not going to mandate that everybody on board be vaccinated on the Disney cruise ship, or that. Uh, they will mandate that right, and you will make sure you have to be vaccinated or have a medical clearance why you aren't vaccinated to be on board. So um, this is still very new. Disney has not responded to that yet, but I expect it probably will within the next few days. Right. No more. Exactly. Um, again, keep tabs with Disney on their website. If you have a travel agent, your travel agent should keep you informed if they're a good one. So exactly. Then, yeah, so. so let's move on with some of the differences. Some of the things are good and some, some people might not be as thrilled about, but um, it is what it is. And we're trying to get things back to, to a little bit more normalcy here, right? That's mm -hmm. always our week by week. That's what we're hoping for. for sure. So, um, you know, the, f the first thing we wanted to chat about was cancellation 
policy. You know, and Disney has been making different structures in the sense of if you want to cancel, you know, for example, 30 days out, etc. But I think the most impactful one is what they call the flexible refund policy. And this is really great because it's it's to try to avoid people who feel like they're going to lose everything if they don't go on that cruise, even if they have COVID symptoms or been exposed to COVID or anything like that. And so what Disney has said is um, booked guests with COVID related health concerns, whether it's, like I said, symptoms or exposure can receive a full refund in their original form of payment without any imposed cancellation fees, or they can apply the cruise fare to a future sailing within 14 days of sailing. So that I think is a really good rest assured, you know, um, and I know there's things about insurance. I was going to mention it also in a second, but I think for everybody going on board to feel like, okay, there is that release valve that if you are worried because you have, because you or somebody in your party have COVID symptoms or know that you've, you know, found out you've been exposed to somebody with COVID, that um, you won't, yeah, you'll lose out on the trip for that moment, but you're not going to lose your money or the chance to rebook or whatever, however else you want to handle that. Yeah, it's, it's really important because, I mean, people want to have confidence. I mean, these Disney cruise lines are not cheap. Let's be, let's face it. You know, they're not inexpensive vacations for, and, and a lot of people save up for years to be right? able to do that. And the concern of trying to book and knowing that something could occur that will, um, uh, maybe not allow you to fulfill right. that sailing and, and maybe lose a, a good portion, if not all of that money that you put towards it um, would be very scary for a lot of people. But this fact that they're trying to know that that fear is out there right. and, uh, you know, make sure that that is uh, set aside for you is, is, is good. And I'm glad that Disney is doing that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, as I mentioned, you know, f- for cruise traveling, you know, a lot of, uh, places, you know, do recommend, you know, getting insurance. And that's even something prior to COVID, you know, just the fact that you're traveling. I think Disney Cruise Line itself, in, in, they are saying you have to have insurance. Right, right. Now. I was yeah. just going to say. So um, right now, um, they're saying if you're not fully vaccinated, <laughs> because again, right now, Disney is kind of saying if you're fully vaccinated and can show proof, you're going to, you're going to have an easier go of it. Yeah. Um, but right now, if you're not vaccinated, um, through the end of this year, through the December 31st of 2021, um, guests 12 years of age and older must have valid travel insurance policies per person um, with, you know, certain minimums of uh, requirement for ex- uh, medical expenses and uh, medical emergency evacuate evacs or evacuation. Um, so that's new right now. It's it, right now they, they're listing it going through the end of this year. We'll, we'll see how things go. Right. So I, I was with cruises. We always recommend uh, travel insurance. I actually recommend travel insurance for any time you're traveling outside of the United yeah. States. Um, because of the fact that you, you, cause medical bill, you don't know for sure what your insurance will cover necessarily. And it can be a little tricky when you're trying to deal with foreign, uh, medical providers should something, you know, unforeseen happen where you even just trip and break your leg or right. your arm or whatever. It doesn't even have to be a real illness. Um, because of the fact that it can be tricky maneuvering between, um, this hospital and your insurance right. or whatever else, um, always recommend when you're traveling foreign and especially on a cruise line that you do, um, some sort of travel insurance. Personal. Yeah. That's, I mean, the other thing can come in handy. Yeah. yeah. The other thing can come in handy is if things get canceled mm-hmm. or if luggage gets lost or something like that, you know, it's just, it's, you know, that peace of mind that you have some ability there. So, yeah. so the other, um, change if you've cruised with Disney before is regarding port arrival time, uh, mainly for people who are at like platinum level before you used to be able to, you wouldn't have to have a a port arrival time. You could come anytime you wanted. If you were already at a platinum castaway club member, now they're saying everybody needs uh, an arrival time. And the online check-in also has, they've shortened the window to 30 days. And um, in the past, you could start putting in your documents, documentation, you know, like of, you know, your ID for your passport with expiration date, things like that. You could do that 
you know, generally speaking, pretty far in advance. And now Disney's saying 30 days. And I, I don't know. I'm, I could speculate as to why I think some of that might be just because they're expecting cancellations and things like that, that rather than collecting a lot of information or setting uh, rival times when, you know, you might have a, a, a portion of the ship not even going on the cruise. I think that's probably just making it a little easier there. And, you know, I guess plus that for people making those reservations, you know that, you know, it's going to be a smaller population and you'll have your opportunity, you know, 30 days out to get that figured out and booked. Um, so that's that's kind of, I think, in terms of preparing for the cruise, just something to expect is different. But again, Disney sending information out. We've already gotten information out for our end of the year cruise that Disney has sent to us. Our travel agent has also sent to us. So, um, you know, at least it's not unexpected news. So Right. Yeah. And I'm going to go through some of that information here in just a second. But yeah, as far as the uh, the online check in 30 days out that is different than what it was in the mm -hmm. past but um, I do think that that's good and that's still plenty of time to get your information in uh, everything else stays the same as long as you've paid in full now they, they've given you a bigger window to you don't have to pay in full till closer to the actual cruise date right uh, but uh, if you have paid in full whatever your window is depending on what ca cabin you're in mm -hmm. or what uh uh, castaway club um, status no. you mm -hmm. are um, you can uh, decide you can start booking as a matter of fact our booking date for that end of the year cruise just right. came up uh, on Friday Friday night uh, Saturday morning yeah. um, to go ahead and, and we did book our we got our Palo brunch yeah. and we got a uh, Remy dinner right. and we have a uh, nice uh, chocolate and liqueur tasting mm -hmm. and one of the shore excursions books. So we already started doing that. And yeah. that's, will stay the same for uh, those of you out there who have a cruise booked in the future, whenever your normal window would, would have been, as long as you have paid in full, you can start booking those activities. Right. Right. So. Okay. So I am going to now throw this to Tom, who's going to really kind of get into some of the details for the, the pre travel. Yeah. And most of this in pre travel that we're going to talk about, which is new and is going on right now has to do with COVID obviously. And that's some things that, that are different because of the fact that this is out there and how they are going to be uh, looking about getting you on board the ship. Now, again, we are recording this on <laughs> Sunday, August 22nd. Tomorrow, this could be different, but this is the way it stands as of right now. Mm -hmm. We actually think that there could be some slight changes, but right. this is how they stand right now. So uh, this is very critical for you to know. I know that on the first uh, cruise aboard the Disney Dream, there were some families that were turned away because they didn't receive quite all the information. There were a couple steps right. that they didn't take. So we want to be sure that this doesn't happen to you to have your cruise, you know, your family disappointed right. because you, you missed one step along the way towards getting your crews out there again. So, um, so th the most important thing is the vaccination and testing. Mm -hmm. I'm going into it now. Every person uh, passenger that sails with Disney will need to either be fully vaccinated or pass multiple COVID-19 tests. Okay. Uh, before you're allowed to be on the ship. Uh, they will send you all the information on this. Like Michelle said, we received an email on our own mm -hmm. and our travel agent also made sure we knew about this and sent the same email to us. So um, I really suggest using a travel agent right now for a yes. They don't cost you an extra dime, but they are there to help you and make sure you have your information. Right. So um, please uh, check into that if you haven't in the past. Uh, and even if you've already booked, as long as it's within a certain window, you can pass that along to a travel agent. Sure. You can actually have them book it or you can um, pass it along to them and let them uh, handle it after you've booked it yourself. So right. just know that. So, so what you will need to do is you will need to set up an account with... They, a website that's called Safe Passage. It's a third-party website that Disney is using to kind of gather this information and make sure that people are checked out and ready to go aboard their cruises. So um, beginning no sooner than 33 days prior to sailing, each adult guest 18 years of age and older must individually register and create an account associated with their reservations or reservations <laughs> if you are doing like a back-to-back -back or something like that. Right. Um, with this Safe Passage website so you'll need to do it for your entire family ahead of time uh, and this is where you'll be uploading either your vaccination um, proof of vaccination or your test results as you go into this thing so uh, parents and legal guardians must use their own accounts to submit pre-cruise test results on behalf of their children under the age of 18 so 
you will have to set them up for right. them if they're younger than 18. So, um, you know, obviously a, a whole minor situation there. Right. So, yeah. In essence, they want to know about everybody that's coming on. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. So once you've uploaded the appropriate documents to this website, it should give you the quote, cleared to arrive, unquote, uh, pre-sale announcement on that website. And that says that you've uploaded everything that you needed to. Now, there may be a little tricky, and this is where I think that first cruise had some issues, is that um, there was some uh, confusion on whether you needed to have a, for the kids 12 and under, whether mm -hmm. they had to have a test ahead of time uh, or just the test in the port. You will need to do both. And um, just because your the website is clear to arrive, you'll want to still bring proof of any tests that you've right. taken, proof of vaccination with you when you arrive to the port. Now, uh, as it stands today, it, like Michelle mentioned earlier, if you're fully vaccinated, Again, this is as it stands today. <laughs> if you are fully vaccinated, you're going to get to coast through a lot of this stuff right. here. And you're going to get charged a lot less right. for a lot of this stuff. That's because if anyone in your party is not fully vaccinated, and this would obviously include children under the age of 12, right. because as of today, they are still not eligible to receive the vaccine, you will have to take two separate tests before you are allowed mm -hmm. to board the ship. The first is a COVID-19 PCR test taken between five days and 24 hours prior to the sale date. So you'll need to get that one out of the way ahead of time and make sure you're cleared. You have a negative test in that and bring that with you. The test, they say it should be a full PCR test, not a rapid test. So know mm -hmm. that going into it. Uh, you will have to pay for this, as I said. Uh, but guests who are fully vaccinated, guess what? <laughs> you don't have to take that right. test as of today. So uh, the second test will be another PCR COVID-19 test that will take place actually in the terminal itself. There will be a $65 test fee that will be charged to the folio of all guests that are 12 and older. So if you're not vaccinated and need to take this test, it's going to be an extra $65 on your bill for right. each person that needs to take this test. Guests that are under 12, no charge though. Right. Since they know that this is a little tricky with kids and they know they can't get vaccinated anyway, um, they're going to not charge the kids to get this done. So again, if you're fully vaccinated, you don't have to right. take that test as of today either. So it really just, well, it's beneficial. You should be vaccinated anyway. Uh, but if you made that decision not to be vaccinated for whatever reason, just know that the going in, you will need to have these things taken place and they will all need to be negative. Right, right. So, um, and I have heard that if for some reason someone in your group tests positive out there, you will get a refund and you can try and rebook the cruise at a different right. date. You just will not be able to be on that exactly. cruise. So. Um, so that's, that's, that's mostly it as far as before you get on the cruise, as far as that kind of thing, as far as the testing and the vaccination policy, again, being vaccinated mm -hmm. opens up many doors for you for many, many reasons, you know, right. around the country, but definitely on a Disney cruise, you're not going to have these extra charges and you don't have to take these tests. Please get vaccinated. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so a couple of the things that are important before you'll need to know before you're going in is that if you have kids that are planning on going to the Oceaneer Club and the Oceaneer Lab or vice or either either or or both, um, it's going to be handled a little bit differently now than it has been in the past. Uh, you must register your children that are th between the ages of three and 12 ahead of time when you're doing the, there's an online check in process. And then prior to setting sale, you'll have to reserve specific session times for them online before you go in. So it's not just you drop the kids off and they stay all day there. Right. They're going to be, because they're going to be limited in capacity everywhere on the ship, but especially in the Oceaneer Club and the Oceaneer Lab, uh, that you know there will be windows when your kids can go into this space. Right, exactly. And from people who have already sailed in, in the most recent past, They've said that uh, once you're on board, if there's some availability mm -hmm. that somebody, you know, either cancels their time frame or the ship isn't as full as they thought they were when they first started booking these windows, um, there could be some flexibility. But that's, you know, if available. Kind right. Of thing. 
Right. There's all, you can do it, a lot of it through the Navigator app. Uh, also, if you want to get on board and if you go to guest services, you can register. And also, if you want to add sessions, if they're available for your children, uh, you can do that through guest services if you don't have access to the app or right. whatever. So The good news for tweens and teens is you don't have to register. No. And your, your areas are come and go as you please. Yes. The teen, as Michelle said, the teen and tweens club, wide open. You don't need a reservation. You can just go up there. However, uh, if you have a really little one, and they may have taken to the It's a Small World Nursery in, in times in the past. That is not open right now. Right. You cannot do that at this time uh, as of True. today. Right. So um, <laughs> also know that if you're uh, dropping off and picking up your child from the Oceaneer Club, Oceaneer Lab, only one parent can go at, at a time. Uh, right. to do this and you are not allowed to go in the club no adults outside of the counselors themselves are allowed to go into the clubs you will have to wait outside for your child or drop them off from the outside right. uh, with your child uh, also just know this and um, i said it's limited capacity uh, the grouping of children will be f about 15 uh, with a counselor uh, while mm -hmm. in the Oceaneer Lab or Oceaneer Club. So they're definitely keeping it very small to limit as much, you know, right. possibility of passing anything along, including just a regular cold, which was annoying <laughs> enough right. as, yeah. it is, as we had to deal with here in the last couple of weeks. So so that's just kind of the look into what you need to know right before you get under the sailing. Now what to expect but might be a little bit different when it's on board. Let's go to Michelle for that information. Well, thank you. And it's still going to be a fun time. You know, it's it's kind of like when we first, you know, got back to the Disney parks. Things were a little different, but still could have a great time. And that's the same thing here. So um, first of all, and, I, and I'll just kind of follow through with what, what you were just talking about with the kids club is, um, and one of the things I do want to say again is that they are still doing open houses for adults at this time, but we'll see how things go with that. But um, so there are opportunities if you're an adult and you want to see what those kids club look like, which we have done and it's, it's amazing and it's fun. Um, it's just also more controlled. But also with the kids club, what Disney is doing right now is they're actually giving kids, you know, like a fun pack, you know, that has some craft kind of things like crayons and things like that. And it's just really to avoid that sharing of things when they get there. So they, they're provided that. And when they go back to the club, they can bring their own, you know, pack of, of crafty kind of supplies. The crafty supplies. Crafty supplies. Love the crafty supplies. Yes, yes. Um, the the pools, like, now when I say pools, I'm not talking the adult pool. I'm talking the family and the kiddie pools. Um, they do have capacity limits. Uh, I know in the UK with the Bahama, with the... The staycation. The staycation. Bahamas. <laughs> in the UK with the staycations, they were, um, you know, having you pre-book, you know, doing like virtual queues. Right now, they're not doing that for the dream. I think they're just... Um, trying to see if they can, through monitoring, through spacing, they've opened up some areas to have more lounge chairs. So like the basketball court isn't being used right now as a basketball court, but it does have more area for people to uh, to participate in getting some of those sun rays when they're on a cruise, which is really great and cool. And so, you know, kind of opening it up and, you know, it, and it's just great to see Disney taking a lot of these precautions, like even for the towels, uh, you it's not kind of like what they do right now where you just grab what you want. They actually have towels set up, kind of rolled on the, on the chairs ready for you. So you're not having to pull a towel that maybe other people have touched. They're really just doing a lot of great things to help prevent, you know, the spread of any germs. So that's awesome. Yeah. I don't know if they're doing this on board the ship and maybe you have the answer mm -hmm. for this, but I know what they've been doing at the Disney resort pools mm -hmm. of like Walt Disney world is like, once you got done using your chase lounge or whatever, you would just fold up the top on right. there. So they would know that you were done using it and they could go over and they can give it a, a good cleaning right, before the right. next person went over and used it. Right. I have not had anybody mention that um, as doing a practice. And I know when we were more recently at a Disney pool, they weren't really doing that anymore, but I would expect that that is something for consideration. You know, and some of the other things that we saw on our Panama Canal cruise when they, um, when the whole pandemic was rolling out there. They've also continued to keep that, which is like for things such as buffets or the beverage area to get 
unlimited beverage, you know, like sodas and things like that, they'll have cast members who are actually serving. So it's not everybody handling the same serving utensils. Limiting the high touch areas. Right. Yeah. Right. And, um, and the other thing too that they're doing is they're really they really are trying to do when you arrive, do a lot of things uh, at the terminal outside and limit the time you're indoors in the terminal. And in fact, like right now, what they're doing for room keys is um, you're not having to pick those up. They're at your stateroom when you arrive. They're on the, the little uh, mailbox fish thing there. So, um, you know, that way, again, just taking steps to make it safer and, you know, less touch points there. So, um, but still fun. And speaking of fun, they still have fireworks at sea. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, right now they're transitioning away from this pirate concept for pirate night. Um, there are still some, some things that, do talk about pirates because kids love pirates, but they've kind of uh, transformed their fireworks show uh, to be more what they call a spectacular journey of color, light and song at sea. So, and it's being named Disney ever after. So um, it's great that they're still having fireworks. It's still a unique thing for Disney to provide on their cruises. Um, it's it's got all the fun and magic that we see at the parks and their their uh, fireworks show. Um, they do have set dates and times, so they do it twice during uh, most of the f like up to four day cruises uh, or four day cruises, and they'll tell you which one to go to. And what they do is like on the um, area outside, like by the pools and things, they do have markers of where families and things can. And so again, promoting the social distancing. Um, so it's, it's great that they do accommodate everyone who can go. Um, it's just going to it when you're assigned to. So, you know, really good, good things. Um, the other thing with the food that they're doing to keep people safer is um, a, you're not seated with other guests. You're seated with your own party. And, you know, with less capacity on the cruise ships, that's what they're able to be able to provide. So um, I know, you know, if you've ever cruised in the past, Disney or otherwise, you've had the opportunity or the potential, however you look at it, <laughs> of um, sitting with other guests. And that's not the case right now. It's just whoever your travel party is will be seated together and nobody else. Uh, the menus are all on the app. So, uh, or you can scan the QR code like we see currently in our everybody's community that's available. Um, so, and, and they're also setting up arrival times for the dining rooms. And I think that's great. I, I hope they do that forever because <laughs> as we've experienced, you know, you, you know, you have your set time for dinner. So let's say you're at the, the 830 seating and like by 820, 825, it is just a, a huge crowd of people trying to get into the restaurant. So it's, it's awesome that they're, you know, giving you an allocated time to go and it's going to one reduce that crowd. But I, I've always found that to be such an annoyance, right. <laughs> you know, so it's Everybody's great. Just, you know, 15, 20 minutes ahead of the, the doors opening for the dining room oh and they're gosh. just gathering out yes. there and standing around and waiting when, you know, I mean, obviously it's, it's not good to show up too late because uh, the, the server's, are trying to get the food out, and especially mm -hmm. when there's shows in some of these, right. uh, you know, associated with some of these dining rooms, they kind of want to try and time it out as best as possible for them and make it easier for them. But at the same point, <laughs> it's like everybody rushing in there right to be in there the first thing. It can be really tough. So sometimes I like to wait, like, eh, give it five right. minutes after the doors actually open up before <laughs> we head in there. You know, not too late that it disrupts everything, but right. at the same point, we're not there with the crowd. Yeah, and yeah. This is going to kind of alleviate that, which exactly. is nice. Exactly. So... You know, great things. And I think, it, like I said, these are things that I think can make it better even for all cruises post-pandemic. Mm -hmm. So um, live shows are still going to be a part of the Disney Cruise experience. So that's great to new, uh, to hear about. Um, so the way they're doing this right now is it's um, first come, first serve. They do have set up barriers for physical distancing like you would see right now out in your own hometown um, for different theaters and things like that. Uh, the number of shows during the cruise will be dependent on the duration of your, your cruise sailing. And, and 
I mean, hey, that would be the case no matter what anyways. But um, what they're saying is it, uh, for the three and four night sailings, which they're currently doing, there's one Broadway style show uh, performed multiple times. So it, it can help allow for re- that reduced capacity. So, you know, as you can see, still lots of fun, you know, uh, that you would come to expect. Uh, and, and I do want to share to some of the other safety measures that Disney is, is taking, which is really cool. And, and that has to do with their technology. It's really been able to uh, provide a lot of more safeguards. Um, so for example, the guest services will have a live chat feature on the app. So that way it avoids you having to one stand in line for guest services, which is always a pain. Um, you know, but just again, you're not, being around more people uh, to have any potentials for exposure. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, we talked somewhat about the virtual cues, uh, you know, that they're going to have, and that's going to be helpful in in a lot of different ways. And I, and I, I foresee that they're going to be using those more and less depending on what things are going on with the pandemic, you know, but my favorite, (laughs) My favorite aspect for the use of technology has to do with the mandatory emergency drill. (laughs) Uh, If you've ever cruised, you know, you have to do that uh, before the the ship actually departs the port, you know, and usually all the guests are going to their mustard station and having to either wear or, or, you know, at least carry their... No, we haven't had to carry your life jackets no. in a while. And they, they kind of got rid of that. There was a time when everybody had to bring That's them with you. Know, where they they got rid of that because yeah. I think it was a little tricky going up and down the stairs, people dangling, you right. know, some of the, the straps true. and everything. So it was just, they would just show. But, but there was a time when you did have to, <laughs> and it, it was always the funny picture. Everybody had their family right. fun picture I on know. the cruise of everybody wearing their life jacket at That's one point. That's true. Yeah. I can neither confirm nor def- deny that there's a horrible picture of me out there with my life jacket on. <laughs> so the way they're doing it now um, is that your app tells you where to go. Y- your you and your family do go to the to the location that you would normally go for the drill. Um, you're scanned in, and then you can be done with that portion. Now, what the ship does is at a certain time, all screens on the ship will show. Uh, you know, the, the educational portion of the mandatory emergency drill. So no matter where you are, whether you're by a pool or in a lounge or in your room, you will be able to watch that drill as if you were doing it live. Um, and then obviously throughout the cruise, you could always pick it up on their TV. So, um, Anyways, I, I mean, I think, you know, the things we didn't cover are the same as what we've done, you know, whether you're talking about photos and things like that, um, you know, all kinds of other fun on board ship. It's just the things that would provide crowds, you know, are, are managed differently and but still offer some fun for people going on a cruise ship. Yeah, very nice. I like it. Thank you. I like it a lot. Thank you. So, I mean... If anybody on this um, podcast of the Hyperion Adventures can talk about Hakuna Matata, you know, and why it's great to be on a, a cruise right now or be planning for a cruise right now, that would be my amazing <laughs> husband, who is just the most positive, wonderful person I know and love. So, honey, what would you say would be, you know, some of the, the real positives of thinking about going on a cruise now or in the near future? Well, I will say, right, I, I, I always think that going on a cruise is always <laughs> a positive. I don't care what time of year it is or, you know, it's like I am all about the cruise. It's one of my favorite things. It's one of my favorite vacations of right. all time. I've loved cruising forever. Um, but right now, I, I do believe, and Michelle mentioned many of the reasons why <laughs> cruising right now is maybe the best time to go cruising. <laughs> I mean, the fact that, you know, you, we've seen these ships, we've seen photos, videos from these ships uh, and how limited capacity right. there are. I mean, there's no guarantee that you'll have as many as like, there was one sailing, I think it was the second dream sailing. Mm-hmm. They said they only had like 900 guests on yeah. board. That's insane compared to how many right. they normally have. But I mean, if you've ever been on a cruise ship or a Disney cruise in particular, you know, I mean, while it doesn't always feel 
super crowded. Right. There are all always those portions where you do feel that way, like we were mentioning going to dinner and right. seeing everybody getting ready to go in there or trying to get that pool chair, that deck chair right. out there and trying to find a good spot by the pool. Well, now with you know, this limited capacity they have going on, you're more likely to get that nice spot by the right, pool. Right, right. Uh, you are, if you enjoy dining by yourself, well, or not necessarily by yourself, but with your party, right. you know, and don't necessarily, aren't the people that necessarily want to mingle and meet new people on board. Well, now is the perfect time for that <laughs> because you're only going to get, you know, with, you're only going to get seated with your party right. at these dining rooms. So you don't even have to worry about like we often, we like, you know, at dinner time, just being us, just being whomever's with us, friends, right. family, whatever. Uh, so we will always put in the request to try and get those tables. And almost always they have come through for us. Right. And even if they haven't, we've been able to talk with the maitre d' or whatever, and they've been able get to ship us. Because that's just how we like to do it. Not that we have any problem with guests. We, we will eat lunch with guests or right. whatever often. It's just kind of when we get to dinner time, we want it to be our own time and not worry about trying to force a conversation necessarily with right. someone that we don't really know. Yeah. So uh, this is perfect for us. <laughs> uh, but also things like Castaway Key, you know, assuming we can actually go to Castaway right. Key, depending on what's going on with the Bahamas. Um, it, it, it's maybe not so bad when the magic and the wonder come in because, you know, they're smaller. Right. They already don't have as many guests on board those ships. But when the dream and the fantasy come to that port, that's a lot of people to right. fit on that beach. But with limited capacity, that gives you more space on the beach, gives you more chance to get that great chair, that mm -hmm. great spot you want, just like it is by the pool. Um, you know, and the thing about the shows, too. I mean, you can get better seats at the shows without having right. to show up well ahead of time, trying to hold seats for friends and family. The movie theaters, you can get the great seats right. in the movie theaters as well. Um, that's the biggest thing to me is like right now, I mean, again, it's a great time to cruise anytime. Uh, but right now with limited capacity, you're going to get to do some things and maybe even book some things as far as Palo or Remy right. or different experiences, shore excursions, whatever, that maybe you wouldn't have been able to do before because of the fact that they're just aren't as many people clamoring for those things. Right, exactly. You know, like when, especially when you're talking like Palos, um, you can only make one advanced reservation. And even when you're on board ship, sometimes, you know, it can be tricky to, if you want to try to get a second brunch in or whatever, having that opportunity to do that could be really restricted. Um, and I, and I think, like you're saying, with less people on, you're going to have more opportunity for that. The fact that the ratio of crew members to guests is is so great. Uh, you know you're going to get a lot of that very special one-on-one uh, -on -one attention, at, you know, at times. Or just, you know, it's just going to be easier to get answers or, or get assistance with things. So all in all, I think, you know, having, like you're saying, it, it's kind of like a specialty cruise, right, right now, where it is less people on there and the other thing too is um when you're talking about booking things it's just even booking cabins you might have booked a cabin you know that you're okay with but you might be considering a different cabin that might not have been available that may be available now because i mean we see that with our cruise it's uh at the end of the year is it hadn't been available for a while now it wasn't even showing up for availability to booking and now it does so if you were somebody who got a cabin that was a little lesser um cost that you want to upgrade uh this is, might be your opportunity it's to true. do that it's true we looked at some other cabins as a possibility and there were some that we're yeah. thinking about but the cabin we got already we were pretty we felt pretty lucky to get right it's got this right. huge extended balcony and everything that we're excited to check out so we i think we're sticking with that but it is cool to kind of look and see and yeah. even if you have made your final payment that doesn't mean you can't shift cabins you may have to pay a little more whatever you won't pay any less i'll tell you that right, right now right. but if you want to book a, a higher level cabin you probably can you'll just have to pay a little more when you do it right but it might have been one that wasn't available when you were trying to book so. exactly it's great mm -hmm. so so that's kind of what i think about why it's a great time to cruise right now again it's a great time to cruise anytime for me <laughs> uh, but why it's especially great right now but now we've already done this cruise. We've had a great time. We've eaten all the food. We've checked out all the entertainment. We've sunned ourselves. 
We've had all the cocktails. <laughs> now it's time to get off the ship. Uh, wah, wah. I know. But what do we need to know? Because there are some differences to getting off the ship now. So, Michelle, please fill in the listeners on what they need to know in that regard. Okay. Um, and it's not like a ton of information. Uh, and again, we are recording this on August 22nd, 2021. So it could change tomorrow. Who knows? Um, but first of all, um, if you've ever been on a cruise, the debarkation day is usually kind of insane. Uh, so some of the things that Disney has done, to, again, it's all in an effort to reduce crowds and congestion, things like that. So your uh, breakfast, you, you know, which everybody is is uh, allocated for on the final day is going to be staggered times, which, um, you know, before it was more groups, depending on uh, what seating you had for dinner. And then um, the other thing is in terms of calling out when to your group is ready to go out. If you've been on a Disney cruise, you right, might remember those character tags that you have on your luggage and they're still using that process. Uh, but just be prepared that it's going to take longer because they're not going to uh, try to inundate the terminal with and the lobbies with people you know, coming out. So they really want to avoid those pockets of having a ton of people indoors waiting around. So um, they're kind of trying to streamline that in some regards. Now for after you're actually off the ship, um, here's what was just updated last week that all guests, adult and children, regardless of your age, who have been on a five night or longer sailing are required to undergo a PCR COVID-19 test by, the, you know, the, the Inspire diagnostic on the ship prior to departing, unless you're fully vaccinated. Um, as, as with the pre-ship kids uh, under 12 have no fee associated with it, but those who are uh, 12 and over who are not vaccinated do need to pay for that. Um, so that's before you actually depart the ship. And then the CDC additionally recommends passengers who are not fully vaccinated self-quarantine for seven days, even if they tested negative there at the, at the cruise. So that's a CDC recommendation, you know, that we hope people heed. Because, again, we're trying to get rid of this COVID thingy. Better yet, just get vaccinated. You don't have to worry about <laughs> that's it. That's true, too. So for now. For um, now. Yes. <laughs> But anyways, you know, so that that's kind of your your end of your cruise disembarking process. You know, uh, again, you, they're really going to try to avoid having tons of people sitting around all through the crowded areas of the ship and, um, you know, and be mindful of the fact that there is some required testing. Right. It's just so. some things to know to, to be prepared for. And again, it's another fee on top of right. it, you know, if you are 12 or older. I mean, again, you know, the, there's no fee for the, because those who are 12 and under can't get vaccinated as right. of this point right now anyway. So that's why they're waiving the fee. Right. If you've chosen not to be vaccinated for whatever reason um, and you're 12 or older, there will be a fee involved. So if you're talking about all three of these tests, mm -hmm. you know, you're looking at uh, anywhere from 130 30. to on up for, for the third test, you per know, person. per yeah. person. So know that going in. Um, it's just an extra fee on top of it. But so, you know, just right. get vaccinated. Just do it. <laughs> Michelle has a clinic that has vaccinated people since the beginning of this thing. Michelle, how many people have had really big problems with the vaccine since you've um, given it out? Not really. None. 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 <laughs> none. Literally thousands of people have gone through her clinic right. and gotten vaccinated. We've both been vaccinated. Go out and get vaccinated. That's all I'm going to say about it. Please just go get vaccinated. Right. Now, one thing I do want to point out right now, this, this post-cruise uh, testing is only required for five nights or longer, which Disney is only doing four nights and less. So if you're as of right now, as of right now, so this is looking more towards when they resume the five, six, seven day and more cruise, uh, voyages. But anyway, it's just something to be prepared for. Right. So, so good stuff. It's good things to know yeah. uh, for sure. And then th it's important stuff that you'll need to know uh, before going on your cruise. Right. Exactly. So any other final, like kind of thoughts or wrap up, honey? 
No, I've already talked about the V word enough times. Yeah. Uh, that is my main <laughs> thought on it. My other thought is that I, I really suggest you get a travel agent. Again, it doesn't cost you a darn thing to get right. a travel agent. The, the companies, Disney itself will pay these travel agents. They get a commission mm -hmm. for booking and handling everything aboard your ship. You doesn't your, your your cruise fare will be exactly the same. But as things change, which they almost certainly will because they've just changed this week. Right. Um they will be able to keep you if you have a good travel agent, that this person will be able to keep you informed as to what you need to know, what you need to bring with you, mm -hmm. what you need to handle ahead of time and it can help you and even if you need to change things for whatever reason, rebook, you're not thrilled that they've changed the itinerary, you're not ready to deal with it, you've had a, oh, God forbid, an issue that you've been mm -hmm. exposed to COVID somewhere um, and you need to make a change. These people can handle that for you. So right. I highly, highly, highly recommend more than anything else, uh, having a travel agent for your cruise that you right. have coming up. Right. That is, that is certainly great advice. It's kind of like a semi-tip. Yes. Semi-tip. Yeah. For sure. For sure. So what about you? Anything in special you want to bring up? Um, no, I think, you know, you, you covered it or we've talked about it in the past. I mean, I, I, I just, again, really feel good that, you know, Disney is really doing its utmost to keep people safe, uh, both on and after the cruise. You know, we're, we're all in this together and everybody's uh, assistance can, you know, really help. But again, I think it's just that it's really encouraging to see that um, with minor adaptations, they're making the experience of cruising more comfortable, not just safer, but more comfortable throughout the, that experience. And I think that's a, it's a positive thing. Uh, as we move forward. And cruises are fun. I mean, we've went yeah. through a lot of technical information, a lot of stuff you need to know, a lot of updates and info and whatever, but let's just talk about it. Disney cruises are a lot of fun. You True. Great vacation time, great pool time, great food, wonderful entertainment. Right. And it's still going to be that way for you. There are some changes. We've talked about some things, mm -hmm. some things you need to be prepared for some things that were going to be different when you're on board, but it's going to be a fun Disney cruise. Take advantage yeah, of that. Exactly. So, so that's our look at, uh, you know, getting back to cruising, all the kind of updates and information that's going on with Disney cruise. And if you have any more questions for us, if there's anything we can possibly answer for you, uh, please hit us up, hit us up at our Gmail account, hit us up on social media. We'd be thrilled to answer them for you. Exactly. And that is our look at getting back to cruising. Well, we talked about that a lot longer than I expected us to. Uh, so let's quickly Shocked. get to the Disney story. We'd like to hear our own voices, obviously. Uh, let's get back to the Disney stories of the week. And I do have a few for you. I'm going to start with, we have an update on a highly anticipated show that will soon be making its debut at the Walt Disney World Resort. Do tell. Yes, this from the Disney Parks blog. The iconic white tent theater in Disney Springs is buzzing with activity once again as Cirque du Soleil artists are returning to the stage to train and rehearse for a spectacular new show that we've been anticipating for a couple of right. years now. Drawn to Life, presented by Cirque du Soleil and Disney, is scheduled to open on November 18th, Yay. 2021. Finally. I know. I know. Yeah, uh, I remember when we first heard about it at D23 in 2019, and it looked amazing. The whole concept of animation and Cirque du Soleil combined with great music just as so exciting. It was so close to getting re or actually get started. It was they were in their final rehearsals getting ready to begin mm -hmm. putting out the show and then everything bum, went bum, crazy bum. yeah in the world <laughs> and of course the parks had to close and they had to shut this whole thing down but now it looks like they're finally getting ready to come back you can start purchasing your tickets now uh, if you're looking if you have a, a, a uh, date where you're heading to Walt Disney World after that November 18th 2021 date uh, just to let you know what Drawn to Life is and it, it says it's a thrilling collaboration between Cirque du Soleil Walt Disney Animation Studios and Walt Disney Imagineering at its core the show is about the love between a father and daughter with a story drawing inspiration from Disney's 
year heritage of animation. The family-friendly show brings timeless Disney stories and characters to life in an unforgettable way through the use of innovative design, acrobatic performances, dazzling choreography, musical scores, brand new animation lovingly created by Disney animation artists, and some extra touches of Disney magic. It really looked cool to us because of the fact that, yes, they've drawn all these brand new things, all this brand new animation, and they're going to incorporate it with the Cirque du Soleil performers. It sounds fascinating it does and you know animation being at the the core of the disney company it just seems to fit perfectly and uh like i said very exciting yeah i uh, can't wait and that that we, we're not ones to get to disney springs very often but mm-hmm. that may draw drawn mm-hmm. may draw <laughs> us to it um so and if you want more information on it you can go to disneysprings.com slash cirque uh, so uh, please look that up because it looks great and i yeah. think from the sound of it, it looks like it's going to be fantastic and can't wait to see it for exactly. ourselves. Exactly. So moving on, we found out a little bit about a different show, a little bit about the new nighttime fireworks spectacular that is getting set to debut at the most magical place on earth. Again, from the Disney Parks blog, they said, as we previously previously announced, Disney Enchantment, an all-new nighttime spectacular, will debut at Magic Kingdom on October 1st, coinciding with the launch of the world's most magical celebration. So here's what they say about it. They say this all-new spectacular inspires everyone to believe in magic with captivating Disney music, enhanced lighting, and immersive projection effects that, you know, they're going to go all the way down Main Street USA for the first time at Magic Kingdom. They've been doing that at Disneyland for a little while. Yes. Oh, don't get me started. (laughs) Uh, Moving on, Um, they say that they have a brand new emotional original song entitled You Are Magic that was done by seven-time Grammy winner Philip Lawrence. Uh, And throughout the show, stunning fireworks fill the sky, providing a great experience for guests throughout the park and in the neighboring resort hotels. Now, here's a few more details about it. They say Disney Enchantment will join dreamers like Tiana, Miguel, Rapunzel, and brothers Ian and Barley from Onward. Yay! Oh, that makes Michelle happy. <laughs> as we set out on an incredible journey with adventurers such as Moana, Raya, and Judy Hopps. <laughs> uh, Joe Gardner from uh, Disney and Pixar Soul takes us into the zone <laughs> where we discover a whimsical world inspired by the style of legendary Disney artist Mary Blair. Wow. Another thing that Michelle's going yes. to love and I love too. And filled with beloved characters from classic stories like Beauty and the Beast and Alice in Wonderland to contemporary tales including Luca and Wreck It Ralph. Everything builds to a climactic moment when Tinkerbell takes Yay. flight. Yes, spreading shimmering gold pixie dust and empowering us all to believe in ourselves and the magic all around us. It sounds wonderful and we know. Disney does such a great job with these shows that this is going to be a very, very special one. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They know how to touch your heart. Yes, for sure. So look forward to checking that out very, very soon. October 1st, it's going to debut. Can't wait for that. Now, we finally need to get to it here. (laughs) (laughs) Put it off long enough, but we need to get to it here. There's a new digital system coming to help you better navigate the Disney parks. And of course, yes, like everything else nowadays... (laughs) It is very controversial. Again, this is from the Disney Parks blog. This is from their reading chart. So just know what they're saying here is not necessarily our words. It's not your words. This is what they're trying to sell it as. So Mm -hmm. be prepared for that. They say, coming this fall to Walt Disney World Resort and Disneyland Resort is... Disney Genie. Built right into the My Disney Experience and the Disneyland app, Disney Genie service will maximize your park time so you can have more fun. It includes personalized itinerary feature that will quickly and seamlessly map out the entire day from specific attractions, foodie experiences, and entertainment to general interests like Disney princesses, villains, Pixar, Star Wars, thrill rides, and more. Just tell Disney Genie what you want to do and it will do the planning for you. And here are some of the uh, some of the features that they will have. You can get itinerary updates from morning to night. Disney Genie will continue to update your itinerary through the day so you can be more spontaneous and go with the flow. <laughs> yes. Uh, you can find your favorites at a glance. Create your very own personal tip board to instantly see your favorites. It will display current and 
forecasted future wait times, helping you predict when you might experience quicker entry into attractions. You can enjoy more flexibility and fun. They say Disney Genie brings existing planning features together in one place. You can join in a virtual queue at certain attractions, make dining and experience reservations, mobile order food at many locations, and get help from a virtual assistant and more. Now, here's where I like... I'm sorry, Michelle wants to say something. Yeah, so I was going to say, all that you've described right now free. is genie free. Free, yes. Genie Doesn't free. Doesn't come with any extra cost. Right, right. And do I comment now or do you want me to wait? Let's get through all this oh, before we start on. commenting. I want to get to one more thing. We can start commenting on the free stuff in just okay. a moment. But there's one more thing that I think is really key here that is also something that we have put into use many, many times use with our son with us. Mm -hmm. And that is the fact that they are also making some enhancements to our disability access service, also known as the DOS yes. uh, program, including new options to enroll in the program pre-arrival and for DOS participants to select attractions directly in the app. These options will be available in addition to their existing in-person DOS system. So that is, True. for those of you who have used the DOS system, which we have done, um, that is a great step that you won't have to necessarily go one check-in to begin with, right. but then go find the kiosk to check in elsewhere to find a wait time for whatever attraction you want to right. get, a return time for whatever attraction. That can all be handled by the Disney Genie. Now, right. Michelle, you want to comment on the free features <laughs> on Disney Genie. Please comment. Okay, so I just want to point out that, you know, first of all, very cool what it's allowing you to do. Now, I know, and we've done some of this in the past, and I know a lot of other people sometimes go to a third-party company to get uh, projections of wait times or get assistance with, you know, kind of mapping out your day. And the fact that you can do all of this on the one Disney app really makes it super convenient, you know, and they're able to access so much more uh, readily, you know, what's going on, especially like, like you're talking about with, you know, if suddenly there's a, a shorter than expected wait time at a particular attraction that you can say, hey, this is, this might be the time to switch over to that. I wanted to do that. I was thinking I had to wait till, you know, nighttime or whatever. And it's now more readily available. And I, and I just think it's a great tool. I remember when we first saw it being displayed at D23, um, it looked exciting, you know, and you know, it, we're going to get into some of the other paid features, but just these free features alone. Um, very cool. I love the idea of having your own personalized tip board. I mean, um, it just, it's kind of like your VIP, right? You got your own personalized tip board and, you know, you can then have information relayed to you quickly and make decisions, you know, um, and for, you know, even though we're types of people that we plan, we plan almost down to the hour at times. Sometimes we do like to have that ability to, you know, and we do in the past have also, you know, f switched over as something became more readily available, even with fast passes and things like that. So um, I just think these are great free features anybody can access going to a Disney park. I mean, just the, the ability to, you know, have one location to find updated information rather than, you know, like sometimes right now where you're, okay, what, what's going on over, you know, we're in Magic Kingdom, but what's going on at Epcot? When should we go over there? You know, and, and try to go back and forth into different parts, even right now of the app to have it being fed to you is it so convenient? Yes, yes. Love it. Love so, it. So these, this is not the controversial portion of the what? app right here. This is the free <laughs> part of the app that is not controversial. Now we're going to get to the part that everybody has a problem with. <laughs> not everybody, but uh, many people have a problem with. So we'll get more into this here. They say for even more convenience and flexibility, there are two other options for enjoying our theme parks. Through a queue we are introducing called the lightning lane entrance that also Ciao. saves your time <laughs> in line. Uh, the first is the Disney Plus, or excuse me, the Disney Genie Plus service, which is available for purchase. Now, I'm going to say this right now. A lot of people seem to have read this and think that this is something you have to purchase right. or that you have to purchase for every single day of your trip. Right. It is an individual per day thing that you can decide if you want mm -hmm. it or you don't. 
Okay. You don't need it. There's all these free services. You can go to the parks, just paying the regular ticket price. Mm -hmm. You do not need to pay for this. But if you so choose that this is something you want to do, here's what it is. They say for the price of $15 per uh, ticket per day at Walt Disney World Resort or $20 per ticket per day at Disneyland Resort, uh, you can choose the next available time to arrive at a variety of attractions and experiences using the Lightning Lane entrance. Uh, you can make one selection at a time throughout the day from classics like Haunted Mansion to thrill rides like Big Thunder Mountain Railroad and newer favorites like Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Runs. Now, attractions are subject to limited availability. So know that just like Fast Pass of the past, mm -hmm. that if they start giving all these out, there right. could be a point where you can't get a time to return to some of these attractions because mm -hmm. they are some of the more busy ones. But it's a possibility. And there are some attractions that are not available through this. Some of the really, really more popular ones, some of the ones that already have a virtual queue, for example, will not be able to be used right. for this to get to the Lightning Lane. They say this convenient option is the next evolution of the fan favorite Disney Max Pass service right. from the Disneyland Resort, which we have used many, many times. Mm -hmm. uh, Disney Genie Plus will also include Disney Parks themed audio experiences and photo features to capture your memories, augmented reality lenses for those visiting Walt Disney World Resort and unlimited Disney Photo Pass downloads from your day if you are visiting the Disneyland Resort. So, um Here's the thing. It, 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 you'll be able to use this thing on whatever day you want. You don't have to use it. Your choice. Right. You don't need to pick it. But let's just say it's a Disney day where you want to go attraction heavy mm -hmm. or it's a busy Disney day, you know, and you don't, you, you think you might be waiting in queues for a long time. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's worth it to you. That is up to you. It, how big is your family? How much do you want to spend? It right. might be of value to you. It's your choice. If it's a slower day or you don't want to, you know, or, or you're not going attraction heavy, maybe you're going to Epcot and it's festival day and you're just going right. to be there to sample a lot of food and drink. Maybe hit an attraction here, an attraction there, but not a lot. You don't have to pay for it, okay? Right, you don't right. have to do it. If you're going to take a lot of pictures on that day, you may want to take advantage of this because guess what? If you if you don't have an annual pass that has photo pass attached to it, this does for that day. You right. will have, and you can even, if you want to, just use it for one person. Right. Get all your photo pass through that one person and you can get those downloads that way. Right, that's exactly. A, some, in, in many regards, that's a $15 for a day or $20 for a day. That's a much better price for Right, it. right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like right now, if you were going to Disneyland and wanted the photo pass, you'd be paying about, I think it's nineteen ninety nine. So, I mean, for a penny more, you yeah. get to also include the lightning lane. Right. So um, here's the deal with it. All guests with a park reservation will be able to purchase the service on the day of their visit. So starting at midnight of that day, you can purchase the service at that time. If you're at the Walt Disney World Resort, you can begin making your first Lightning Lane suggestions. Actually, you can, I, I take that back. You, anywhere you are, you can begin to book your Lightning Lane reservations mm -hmm. at 7 a.m. at the Walt Disney World Resort. If you're at Disneyland Resort, you can't do it until you get in the parks. doesn't matter if you're staying on property or off property. Mm -hmm. You can start booking them at the Walt Disney World Resort at 7 a.m. Disneyland, you actually have to be in the park. Virtual queues, still the same though. 7 a.m., no matter whether you're in the park or right. not in the park, Disneyland, Walt Disney World Resort, right. whatever. Yeah. So... Um, now, the, there's rumors of what attractions are not going to be included in this. Obviously, ones like Rise of the Resistance and Remy's Ratatouille Adventure mm -hmm. that have a virtual queue as associated with it, those will not be available to be able to get a return time uh, for them using this system. Uh, some others that are rumored, and these are rumors, are some of the more popular attractions like Slinky Dog Dash, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train, Space Mountain, Test Track, Avatar, uh, flight of passage, I should mm -hmm. say. Um, just know that that going in, have the information ahead of time. If these are attractions you really want to go into and you're thinking about paying for it, um, know that these might not be included. With right, that. right, yeah. So uh, now there's other ways to possibly get in some of these attractions, including these ones we just talked about that are not including in mm -hmm. that. And that is the individual attraction selections that are available for purchase. So depending on the time of day, depending on how busy it is, 
time of year, a lot of things. Some of these different attractions, you will be able to purchase just for that single attraction, a spot in the lightning lane to get into that spot. It could be, it could be Rise of the Resistance. It could be Slinky Dog Dash. It could be Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. Over here, it could be Radiator Springs Racers. Mm-hmm. It could be Web Slingers. Rise of the Resistance over here at Disneyland as well. This is something that's, you know, not most people I don't think are going to do. But I think it's interesting that there are some people that maybe they only get to go to Walt Disney World or Disneyland once every so many years. Mm -hmm. And you missed out on the virtual queue to Rise of the Resistance, but you really, really wanted to do it. It's an option for you that you won't miss out on it. Is, Is it unfortunate that you have to pay extra to do this? Maybe so. But it's a value to you because this is something you won't get to do again for five years, maybe ever. Right, right. So, I mean, um, and one of the nicer things about this one is you get to select up to two attractions, whereas with the Genie Plus, um, you just get the one. Um, And it goes across multiple parks. So if you're planning to park hop, you know, which again is, is a better process than what we had with fast passes which you could only do you know until you've used your first three you could only do one right. park well even after that you won't, you know one location so here's where you do get a resort advantage if you're trying to do these where you're paying per attraction is that you when you are staying at a disney resort you will be able to open up at 7 a.m and book those two mm-hmm. attractions up to two attractions that you want to pay for individually if you're staying off site you have to wait until you actually get into the park so that is the one little advantage you get there in regard to that so um I'm going to let Michelle talk about it first, and then I'm going to start saying my thoughts on this. Right. Um, you know, and I, and I think my opinion is based on the fact, like you said earlier on, we have used and paid for Disneyland Max Pass and found it to be very convenient and very f- enjoyable that we, and happy that we did it. Um, you know, I like the fact that you can do it uh, on some days and not other days, when we when we had the uh, annual pass for Disneyland, you you could pay more just for the whole ha- having it for the whole entire time of your annual pass. But that made the annual pass a lot more expensive. So I kind of like this single day opportunity if you want to take it. And other days, you know, like you said, if you're just going to the parks to enjoy some food or people watch and pick up one or two attractions, if you can, um, then you don't have to do that. And you still have all the free fun things that Genie provides, um, you know, through your app. I understand that it's going from something that people feel that were free was free in the past and is a paid thing. Now we totally get that, you know, and, and we've seen that in a lot of different aspects of life, um, you know, or, or even things on the internet that, you know, sometimes you have a service that's free and now you have to pay for it. And it's a disappointment when you have that experience. Um, you know, it's looking at it at a different way. It, you know, if you still want to love Disney and love the park experience, you can still do that. It's, it's kind of the sticker shock, I guess, at first, for sure. Totally understand that, you know, it's just looking long term, you know, to have that available option if you so choose to do it. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Uh, like I said, we've done the Max Pass system. Mm-hmm. We enjoyed the Max Pass system. Right. Um, and some people have brought this up. The difference between this and the Max Pass system is the fact that w- at Disneyland, uh, when the Max Pass system was in effect, you were also able to go get paper fast passes right. during the day. You could go over to the attraction. It, you may have to go all the way across the park. You may have to go to, to the other park. park. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you could do it. Uh, whereas the Max Pass was convenient. As soon as you scanned into your attraction, you could start making your Max Pass reservation for the very right. next attraction if you wanted to. There was a convenience factor. There's the photo pass factor, which is good. Um, there are a lot of things I, I, I liked about that. Now. Um, one thing about that is that when you have both people paying the max pass, Mm -hmm. it was included in some annual passes, or you could pay extra for your annual pass, um, to have it just be automatically every time you went to the park, you Mm -hmm. had that availability. 
Um, and then you had the paper fast passes as well. That was very much filling up the fast pass queue. Right. You know, so that was, you know, there would be a lot of them. They would go away. You know, they would go quicker. You may mm-hmm. not have those times right. that you were looking for to go on these attractions. They might, might not fit into your window. Keeping it all into one space will kind of marginalize that a little bit. It also, we had that. Now, remember, in Disneyland, we had that. We had the paper fast pass and the max pass right. and standby. Right. Now, you will have just the paper and the standby. That may allow the standby to move a little more quickly because sure. you're not having the free and the paid going along with it. I like options, personally. I'm thrilled. We probably will not put this into use a lot. We are not as attraction heavy as we once were. Mm-hmm. There are days when we like to do a lot of attractions. Right. It's not as frequent. We probably won't do this a lot. But there are times when family is in town, uh, whatever, that right. we may decide, hey, you know what? They want to do a lot of attractions. Right. We want to do This is the best way to go. We don't mind paying that 15 or $20 extra for right. that single day. Right. We don't have to do it. Again, you do not have to do it for your whole trip. You can pick and choose that day. Right. You can get to the park and look and see what it's like that day and then choose it if right. you think it, you need it. You don't have to use this. It can be. Now, I agree with you. I think it's unfortunate that people, that, you know, something that, seem was free before is kind of going away and that you know that's never fun for anybody mm-hmm. and so i kind of get uh why people are upset by this um but i i don't i think this is a nice balance because i thought when this was first going to happen i thought we are only going to have standby and the you pay per attraction mm-hmm. thing this middle of the road max pass similar thing with right. genie plus is a nice balance in my opinion right. between the two things that that you get it gives you another option you don't have to pay whatever fee for the attraction you can if you want to if there's something you really want to get onto yeah you can do that but otherwise you can kind of find this middle of the road place or you can just not pay anything extra and just enjoy yourself uh, and, and 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 pay what your normal uh what your normal fee would have been if on any other day going to the parks right right i mean i think you know something you were just kind of bringing up too and and is you know the fact that before fast pass was free um it did inundate the ride system that if you did pay for max pass your likelihood of getting the fast passes was diminished for a time that you wanted. You might have to wait like a lot longer or something like that. So, you know, then you felt like, oh, I'm paying for this, but I'm still not getting a whole lot more access than if I did, you know, walk across the park or whatever. So now you, when you're limiting that lightning lane usage to people who do pay for it, your likelihood to get the value out of that $15 $15 or $20 at the park is going to feel more like you have value to it. Right. There's no perfect system. No. There are people that didn't like the fast passes. They wanted the fast passes just to be completely eliminated and it just be everything be standby. Mm-hmm. There's people that love and they want everything to be virtual queue. Right. There's people that despise the virtual queue and want it to completely go away. There is no perfect system. To me, while this isn't ideal, again, there's no perfect system, I feel like this is a really good balance between the two. Now, there is one thing that I kind of don't like going on right now, and I hope that it will eventually change. And that is the fact that I feel like it's not as beneficial to you as it used to be to stay on a Disney resort property Mm -hmm. because you used to be able to get a lot more things when you were staying there. There was a little bit extra perks for staying in a Disney resort, whether it be, you know, getting there and getting back to the airport with Mm -hmm. using the magical express, Uh, whether it be getting these fast passes Mm -hmm. early ahead of time, uh, ADRs earlier, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, ahead of time. Um, Right now, There are not as many perks to staying on resort and the prices are still, if not at least the same, maybe a little bit higher Mm -hmm. than they were in the past. And so you have to really think about it now and what is important to you. Yes, you get the free Disney transportation, which is a nice, it is still nice and getting you to and from the parks uh, to your resort to different destinations. That is a good thing. Um, But it may benefit you more to cut that price. Go to, there are some nice 
hotels. We stayed in one very mm-hmm. recently, right. very near Walt Disney World itself that are like half the price, especially if you have a rental car and you're not, you know, you don't have to pay for the parking as well on right. top of that. Uh, that it may be beneficial to you to do that instead. Do the math. Think about it yourself. But I hope that Disney starts showing some people because I really felt like part of staying at a Disney resort is you had that extra stuff. And yes, there is still magic. Yeah. And you were in the bubble. Right. There is still that magic of staying at a Disney resort hotel. I just don't feel you get quite as many perks as you once did mm-hmm. for a premium price at a lot of these places. Right. And, you know, um, part of that, this is just, again, my opinion, might be for the fact that Disney is filling up their resorts a lot of the times. Um, because they haven't been able to open all of their resorts for various reasons. And so they haven't had to um, have as much incentive for people to stay there. And, you know, they're, if they were focusing on people coming into the parks, it's like, okay, as long as they're from somewhere coming into the parks, that's a good thing. Yeah. So. Agreed. So um, there's a little bit of disappointment in that regard for me, but mm-hmm. in all in all with, uh, with Genie and Genie plus um, I don't have a significant, I definitely don't have as much of an issue with it as a lot of people out there. Yeah. I understand it's not perfect. There is no perfect system, right. but I don't, think it's as bad as many people are trying to make it out to be. And that, again, just my opinion. If you feel it's terrible, I get it. If you feel Disney is charging too much, I definitely get it. Disney is not an inexpensive trip. I get it that there is a lot of pricing. I think a lot of the, uh, one of the biggest things with this is that there's a lot of stuff going on. They allow, they announced the, you know, the price of Galactic Star Cruiser, which is very expensive. And then they announced this uh, on top of a couple other things and the prices for some of the parties, which have gone up or whatever. And it just seems like it's all these things that are, are coming together and Disney gouging, you know, is what they kind of the general feeling is out there when I don't think that any, all these things are necessarily tied into one another. Um, I just think it's kind of what's happening in the world right Right. now. I mean, you know, let's face it. Disney is having to pay people a lot more now. Right. They, they they have higher overhead now. Um, yeah. I mean, just in terms of recruiting, having onboard sign signage, uh, costs that they're paying that they never did before, uh, the hourly rate, you know, they, you know, which is, you know, we all love that people are getting paid more per hour. Um, but that does really add to the cost and expense of running a company. And, you know, not trying to sound preachy, but no. it's understandable that somewhere there's got to be some money to offset some things. Um, you know, and we see that in every industry, every industry. Um, you may not notice it as much in your restaurant, your favorite restaurant, Mm -hmm. but yeah, you know, a lot of times that you'll, you'll take a look at the menu and the price may have jumped up by a buck or so, you know, relatively speaking, um, that's because they have to do that. Right. Or portion size is decreasing. Um, It could be a lot of those things. So it's unfortunate. Of course, we'd all like it to stay the, you know, a lower price Mm -hmm. and get more perks. We'd all like that. Of course, who wouldn't like that? But it's kind of the, the price literally of doing business in some regards. So again, understand it, understand some of the outrage out there. We just don't have, ourselves as much of a problem with it as some people right right and you know again we're not like thrilled about everything about it but there are some good things about it and uh you know look to the positive right again there's no perfect system Mm -hmm. um i liked the fast pass system that way we had in place before this wish they could have gone back to that but it just doesn't seem right for disney right now and maybe if people don't buy this if you're if you're outraged by it don't buy don't do it yeah choose another place to go on vacation choose another place to stay you know don't pay for the genie plus or the individual attractions if enough people do that maybe it'll change right maybe not but that's, you know, it's a bottom line is that how is how an economy works, you know, is that it's driven by consumers. Yeah. And so you tell it what to do. So it's up to you to decide what you think is right in this regard. Exactly. So enough about that. I'm sorry yes. we've been preaching. And yes. It's just, it's just, it's, I was going to give you the cut thing. Yeah, I'm cutting it right now and getting to the thing that we've all really stuck around for. And that is, of course, Michelle's tip of the week. <laughs> You know, she does the best lists. She does the best research, but she definitely has the best tips. So let's get to it. Here is Michelle's tip of the week. Okay. My tip actually has kind of a quirky, weird twist to it. So, uh, but I wanted to do a tip that corresponds with our main topic, which is returning to cruising. Um, So 
just a couple of things to think about um, if you're planning a back-to-back cruise. And I know a lot of people don't usually do that, but for that small minority of people who do that, we've done it, loved it. Um, But just a couple things to prepare for and think about. So one is, um, so if you ever take a back-to-back cruise, you do have to disembark and then reboard. That that's just a you know requirement. And so when you're disembarking, be prepared to have some uh, like a day bag with some essentials that you might need, whether it's medications you need to take at certain times, or snacks, or games for the kitties, for the children. <laughs> um, <laughs> Because the reboarding might not be as quick right now as it was in the past, you know, for the um, for the ship to be considered uh, cleared for boarding for a new voyage. Um, But the other here's the weird twist, but it's just where my mind goes. Um, As we mentioned, you do have to test at the end of a cruise, right? So that still has to take place, even though you're going off the ship and coming back on. You still need to test. And one of the things I guess to have in mind is if you happen to test positive there, you're not allowed back. So you're not allowed to go back on the ship to get your things. Now, Disney will arrange to get your things, but maybe just something to think about of how you want your stuff laid out in your room. I'm not saying you should repack in the event, but you know, um, it might be something that you might want to consider that if you, especially if you um, sense that you have some symptoms or you feel like you might have been exposed to something, uh, might be some little thought to have in the back of your head if you're going to take a back-to-back cruise that if you test positive and you're not getting back on that ship, you're going to rely on Disney to pack your things up. Right. That's a good point. I didn't really think about that, but it is a very good point. They always tell you like when you board, uh, when your luggage is being brought up, make sure that you have any critical stuff uh, with you uh, in your carry-on. Even on airplanes, they tell you to have any critical stuff that you need with you in your carry-on. Yeah, just the fact that, you know, you gosh forbid that you actually, you know, test positive when you're on, you get off the right. ship and you're getting ready to board back in a, you know, about an hour or whatever it is, right. you know, that that happens. But um, it, it is probably a good idea to be sure you have, you know, passport or, you know, right. identification or medication mm-hmm. or anything just in case, just in case. Right, you know, right. That, that you know. So that's, or like that's I said, a, entertainment things that you have to wait for Disney to get you know, have the opportunity to clear your room out and bring you the, those things and get, you know, your luggage to you. So yeah, it, like I said, a little quirky, doesn't apply to a lot of people. Although I do think more people right now with the shorter cruises are doing back to back, especially since some of the pricing, you know, makes it affordable in that regards too. So anyways, just weird, something to think about. What yeah, about you? Very good. <laughs> Uh, my tip, well, I've already used a couple of my tips. Uh, yeah. with them. One, I can't top that tip. Michelle's tip is <laughs> always the very weird. best tip. And that is definitely a really, really good tip um, right there. Um, and I've already used actually a couple of tips that I was planning on bringing up here possibly mm-hmm. at the end, whether it be a travel agent, whether it be the photo pass right. option with your, so I'm just going to go to oil standby. Stay hydrated, everybody. Be sure to be yes. hydrated when you're at the parks, <laughs> on the cruise line, wherever it is. Stay hydrated. That's my tip. Um, I'll, I'll come up with a new tip next week, but I use them all up throughout the show. So, um, uh, we appreciate that you joined us today in the future. You can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. By the way, next week, uh, we haven't done a deep dive into a classic Disney character in a while. So we thought next week Mm -hmm. would be a great time to do this again. Matter of fact, we're going to do a couple of characters. Michelle, who are we talking about next week? We're going to be talking about those famous Rescue Ranger Chip and Dale. Oh, yes. So Michelle is going to do another deep dive into a character, which are always fun. So can't <laughs> wait to find out some interesting information and stuff I never knew about Chip and Dale. And that should be a, a really, really cool topic. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah, I think it's going to be great. So that'll be next week. As I said, we appreciate that you joined us today. In the future, you can find us most everywhere you get podcasts. However, the very best place to find us is on our own website, 
HyperionAdventuresPodcast.com. And while you're there, you'll be able to sign up for our newsletter. And for those of you who have, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that you've signed up for the newsletter. It's just another way to be involved in the Hyperion Adventures Podcast world. Another great way is on social media. We're on Twitter at Hyperion Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Hyperion Adventures Podcast. Please join in with the positive Disney fun that we're having on the Hyperion Adventurers Facebook group. Yeah. Uh, you can always check us out also on YouTube. Uh, just do a quick search for Hyperion Adventures Podcast. Hit subscribe. And you'll know whenever we have a new video. And if you ever want to contact us for any reason, please hit us up at our Gmail account, Hyperion Adventures Podcast at gmail.com. We love hearing from you. And again, if you have any questions about anything, uh, especially today's topic might have prov- provoked some questions, please let us know. Yes, if we can answer them, we will. Um, and if not, we will try and uh, get the an- put information you the, for you. The direction that you need to go. So. That's it. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Hyperion Adventures podcast. We look forward to sharing some time with you again next week. Until that time, I'm Tom. I'm Michelle. And we hope that you have a magical week. Bye.